Well, good day, campers, or buongiorno, as they say in Italy, where I'll be going in a few weeks. Um, today, we're going to do a plain air painting. Uh, basically, plain air, translated from the French, says means outdoors. So here I am outdoors, and I've got my setup, and uh, I'm going to do a painting. I'm going to paint this scene, or make an attempt to. Uh, it's a lovely scene. I'm on the bike trail between Vent Ventura and Ojai. And I like the three little rows of orchards out there and the mountains in the background. I'll add some clouds to the sky. Over here, uh, I'm illegally parked on the trail. My little doggies are patiently waiting for me. It's warm out, but uh, we're going to survive. I'm going to use a very limited palette today. White, ultramarine, yellow ochre, yellow, black, and uh, reddish color. Uh, I wish I would have brought my little table with me, but I didn't. Um, I've already laid out uh, the painting on my canvas uh, in pencil. Uh, I've got everything I need here. Let me show you the full setup. Uh, there we go. I've got a nice easel with a painting on it and the palette and uh, everything I need. So I'm going to get started. Well, as you know, there's nothing scarier than a blank canvas. So I'm going to start by just covering the canvas with paint. Uh, then we'll get into the details later. How's that sound? Buongiorno, art lovers, and welcome to my studio. Uh, my plein air event was a total disaster. I'd forgotten how, when it's 90 degrees outside, the, uh, the paint will dry before it gets from the palette to the canvas, and that makes it a little challenging. So the dogs and I went into Ojai. Uh, I had lunch and uh, a beer, and uh, now we're back in the studio, and I'm going to work on this painting. And thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you being here. So now I'm going to continue filling the canvas with paint, starting with the sky. I always have to paint the sky two or three times to get it right. I'm also going to change the color of the hills and the mountains to try to add a little depth, uh, maybe put in another layer of hills. You can see I've left a space there for a fence post. I, later on I decided to block it out. It seems sort of silly to have one fence post without the railings or the other part of the fence. So there you go. Painting it out. No more fence post. One of the things I always struggle with is the foreground. In this case I think I've had, I have too much foreground. I may, I may cut that down later once the painting is finished, but uh, it's, I mean, that's half the painting. It's a bunch of stuff in the foreground. I, I really have more interest in seeing what's in the back. It is fun though, uh, making these trees with this little brush I got from Ace Hardware. It's all, uh, it's a very uh, unusual little paintbrush. It's intended for trim painting in a house, but it makes great trees. I've decided I need to put some more darks in the trees. If I'm going to have them, I may as well try to make them look three-dimensional. I'm going to add some highlights to those trees in the background hill too, just to get a little contrast between the hill and the mountains. Well, here it is, finished. Um, I don't take a lot of time with these paintings. <laughs> I, I like to do them quickly and, and uh, I enjoy that. So, uh, But here's a cut down version of the same painting. I cut three inches off the bottom. 
I made it a 9 by 12 instead of a 12 by 12. I think it's a better result. Thanks for watching.